Robert Rolla. And uh, they've already uh, done some preliminary work, getting ready to rerun, uh, reroute electricity coming in the, the old building and some stuff. So we'll be getting on that. So uh, we will have considerable, considerable more expense this year than what we've had in probably ever when you get down into the totals because uh, when you're talking about 1.6 and we're already looking at doing some amending on that to go ahead and maybe uh, go ahead and put uh, all steel uh, raised seam metal roofing on the, the building we got to do some work up there on the roof anyway taking down some old chimneys and some things and now would be the time to maybe come th come in and put a, a good long long lasting metal roof up there to look good and uh, really serve us well if we do so we're looking at that and some things but at any rate well otherwise though we ended the year well i do want to mention we are working on budget and uh, by statute in january we until we have a budget approved for 2023 we can't pay any bills until that budget is approved right. other than, other than regular regular payroll will be approved but otherwise so uh, you know for vendors out there who have some bills to us be patient it'll be uh, we have a budget hearing scheduled for january 30th and uh, there are statutes in place you know you can't have the budget hearing within 10 days of when the do budget documents mm -hmm. available it's got to be advertised in the local paper at least five days so you have all these things you have to work around and uh, but we'll get there and we'll get the budget approved on uh, january 30th budget hearing it 10 o'clock is open to the public as we uh, look over the budget one final time and we'll get it approved and we'll set in to pay in a big stack of bills. And, and you know, this time of year, we all know weather can be throw a lot of monkey wrenches into this too. So you still have to have a little bit of time, but right. you know, uh, no, it takes right now, right now though, I mean, really the county kind of, I'll say, I don't want to say got an early start on the budget, but you got people going in that direction right? so that when January hits, they're virtually ready to start bringing in their numbers, aren't they? Yes, right. After the last day of January, everybody can get what their year-to-date totals are, and they can start getting their budgets in. And most of the office holders, I mean, every office holder is responsible for turning in their budget request. Mm -hmm. By statute, they have until January the 15th to get that budget request to the county clerk. The county clerk is charged with putting those numbers together together and uh, getting them to us commission will review those we'll meet with some of the office holders about their budget requests and so on um, uh, there's uh, oh there's just a few of those budget requests still out there and I mean the commission we're looking at ours we're looking at the road and bridge budget putting mm -hmm. that information together our office budget and so on we'll be getting that stuff put together so over the next couple of weeks we'll be uh, reviewing those extensively and, and digging down into the hard numbers of, of what's what and what we need to do and, and uh, go from there so it's a, it's an every year deal, and there's as we've talked before, there's uh, I forget now how many twenty some different separate budgets that we have to go through and put together to to make the whole thing uh, come together and work. So, uh, but of course the main ones are general revenue, the law enforcement uh, for the sheriff's office and deputies that budget. Then there's the two jail fund budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the the big ones in the road and bridge budget. We have the nine one one fund as a separate budget. Senior uh, citizens. Yeah. Then there's the senior citizen budget and the Senate Bill forty. Uh, budget so uh, which is sheltered workshop and all the other things you got 911 yeah. budget as well yep yeah. the 911 budget and uh, that was one that uh, we're going to be looking at we're going to have to do something somewhere here down the road you know the 911 fund is uh, is funded by the uh, surtax on landlines and uh, so as everybody knows the number of landlines is decreasing as uh, cell phones become more prominent and uh, I think if I remember right, I looked at that the other day. I think it was down about 6000 this year again. There is an option you can do where you can eliminate the surtax on landlines altogether and replace it with a, uh, with a flat fee on all handheld uh, mobile devices that would be capable of making 911 calls. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably going to make more sense uh, as we go out down the road. Because quite frankly, the 911 fund isn't generating near, nearly enough oh, money no. to pay for the cost of operating the 911 system. And, uh, you know, it does, it barely pays for, for one 911 dispatcher, uh, for one. And, mm -hmm. you know, dispatcher, you have to have somebody there 24 /7. 7. So, yeah. you know, it's a balancing act. The sheriff's office is going to have a dispatcher there 24 7. Uh, we've been able to use 911 funds to help pay for at least one of those staff positions. Uh, but it's, it's getting more critical. But it isn't just that, it's just the equipment. And periodically, you know, just a few years ago, well, actually, just this year, we, mm -hmm. uh, we invested 125000 and we were able to use some of our uh, Title III National mm -hmm. Forest money to upgrade 911 equipment right. services for dispatching. It was a, an allowed expense.
expense, and that money was sitting there so we could do it. But those monies aren't always sitting there. The 911 fund needs to be generating a little more money on its own to help cover the cost of operating a 911 system. This is a problem all over the state. Even mm -hmm. even counties that have a uh, have a sales tax and have a separate, when you have a sales tax, when you implement a straight sales tax, which would take a vote of the people, you, you have to uh, then the, the county loses pretty much complete control over it. And then you have to set up a 911 board with elected board members, mm -hmm. and they do their own thing. And, and I don't know, I, I, as I've listened to the stories around the state, I haven't been very impressed on how those deals work because, uh, uh, well, it's just an expensive system to operate. And so right now we're, we're getting along fairly well, making it work like it is, but it is a concern when you see uh, – see those revenues i think revenues went from forty-eight thousand this year down to about forty-two thousand. and it's been trending down been over trending a number down. of years now of course you know we'll keep yeah. looking at it and we'll see but at any rate that's just one of them mm -hmm. and all the others will be taking a look we'll be working on them budgets january 30th we'll have the budget here in and on we go and everybody's welcome to attend sure yeah the budget, budget document there'll the be an announcement that the budget <laughs> document is available for anyone who wants to see it they can pick it up at the county clerk's office or give give the county clerk's office a call and they'll mail you a copy of the proposed it is a, it is right. a tentative it's a budget tentative proposed right. budget it is subject to change as we go along until we get it approved so but we'll, it'll be what we put out there's a tentative budget will be pretty close if not the exact thing that we approve on January 30th that's always the goal right. i mean i don't you know to me it's uh it's kind of a shell game if you put a budget out there knowing that it's going to be drastically different on the day you approve it. So uh, what's what's the point of that? Well, yeah, well, that's kind of uh, – that that's happened before in other entities, and I thought, guys, you know that those aren't numbers aren't, aren't accurate. Yeah. You know, why are you calling it a budget if you know that you're already going to have more income than that to begin with right yeah. off the bat? And we hadn't even started the year yet. Yeah. You know, so. Well, anyway, then, we try to get pretty. We try to get pretty close, but we do. We do give our. We will have our budget estimates on the revenues, kind of on the low side. You know, we are still sitting here with this Department of Revenue deal. Uh, again, as we've talked about ad nauseum, but we're still waiting to hear a final approval from Department of Revenue on how we're going to pay back this money that they that we have to pay because of their mistake. And it's about 900, approximately 933, 935,000. Uh, but I'm, I'm optimistic and hopeful that it's going to be a, a payback uh, plan that, that in the works that it will be to where we can do that without feeling, uh, without it affecting us drastically budget wise. And, yeah. and, so, and this isn't, it's just, I think people say, well, why hasn't this been decided yet? It's not just what Dent County wants, there's other counties involved as well as DOR. And they all have to be happy with this, or well, supposedly. Well, we had yeah. first we were at the Department of Revenue's mercy of, yeah. of them finally getting to what the exact figure was, and it took them a long time to do that. Right. And once they did do that, they said, "Here's the figure, and that this is not going to change, at least not as not as a result of this particular incident." And again, this is their mistake they made. That's uh, that we're, we're in the middle of. And so, at any rate, so we've been at their mercy. We've been at their mercy completely all the time. And now we've agreed at what the amount is, and what we've been discussing and debating was how the payback of that was going to look. Right. And uh, you've made an and, and uh, the county has made an offer what they would like to see. Right, we have. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so they're, they're, they're looking at that, and they've kind of come back with a counter that uh, looked pretty good, and uh, we're just waiting for them to say, here's the, until it's signed. Mm -hmm. it's you don't not, believe it. It's not done. <laughs> yeah. And so show me the, show me the signature, and, and when that happens, then there will be a withholding for a period of, uh, of months to pay back, pay, pay that back, and if it, and I'm hoping it's a, a long enough period that we can, we can stand that without it drastically affecting us. So, but we're still, it's just still kind of hanging in the air. We really thought, uh, we really thought we would have an answer the first of December, and then we were hoping the last of December. Still waiting, and it's all the ball is all in Department of Revenue's court. Mm -hmm. well, so, especially now that you have a prepared budget, it really makes it difficult. Well, it does. So, we'll we'll prepare it based on what I what I think is going to happen from the last conversations that we had and hopefully those will they'll stick with those and that's okay. where we'll be and so and so it'll be fine but but again that's that's one of the things we got to take into account and uh, along with everything else you know fuel expense and while fuels come down lately mm -hmm. it's still overall is uh has increased quite a bit but so fuel utilities everything is just uh as everybody listening to this knows it costs more to do everything 
And uh, so we got to try to factor all them things in and arrive at a budget that'll work. That is true. That is true. So anyway, but uh, uh, so again, we won't be paying any bills other than regular uh, payroll until we get that budget approved uh, January 30th. Okay, and very then we'll good. get caught up. Well, one thing that didn't change in price actually was uh, a new contract with uh, SMDH for services at our jail for uh, health services that was replacing the one that came out of the Ozark, uh, I, was, I can't remember whether it was Ozark Penitentiary, Ozark, Medical. I don't know, some kind of Ozark Health. Yeah, but it was oh, out of Pulaski out County. Out of Pulaski County, yeah. But that price yeah. actually stayed the same. Right. The sheriff did work out a deal with Salem Memorial, uh, Salem Hospital, yeah. for them to provide uh, the medical services uh, for the jail. If you're When you're operating a jail the size of ours, you've got to have uh, somebody there helping on that and, and fulfilling filling that role as for, as for as professionals that are mm-hmm. uh, qualified so uh, real glad uh, sheriff bob wells done a great job of working that working that out with the hospital to uh, keep that here in the county so uh, yeah it's about a hundred and forty thousand uh, dollar contract and uh, very tickled that we can keep that hundred forty thousand dollars here and, with much better yeah, service they're and, down there every oh, day oh yeah but much better immediate service yeah. and, and ready to you know that can respond and help so glad to, glad we was glad to get that done and appreciate the sheriff working on that and he's been working on that for some time and hoping yeah. it would come through so that was a good deal yeah always always like good deals that, that always yep. makes it good so anyway but otherwise we're still even though we're not paying bills there's still all the regular work going on oh there is yeah storms come crews have been out we're working out on the roads a couple of weeks ago yeah. this weather's been pretty uh pretty changeable pretty the last couple weird. weeks yeah that was quite a little storm we had there shortly before christmas and not only that we also had a 100 degree temperature change in a week yeah yeah <laughs> pretty much amazing isn't it yeah, yeah. crazy at minus 40 and then we had 60 well, almost well, 70 including, degrees including wind chill yeah, yeah i hadn't oh, thought yeah. about that yeah, yeah. Just the direct temperature change was pretty uh, pretty awesome. About eighty two degrees. Is that right? In direct temperature change. Eighty two degrees. Yeah. So anyway, but the road and bridge crews, of course, they they were working on the roads, doing what they could in that little uh, deal that hit before Christmas. Uh, and it was that was one of them deals. You know, we didn't really hardly get enough snow that they could blade, but uh, they were out doing what they could to applying some material on some, especially mm-hmm. chip and seal roads that get slick and stuff. So uh, luckily, it didn't last long. But otherwise, the crews have been grading roads. Uh, the crews have been. Rep- out replacing culverts and cleaning out culverts, stockpiling uh, gravel material to, mm-hmm. to use when we do have the bad weather, replacing what some they did use. Been cutting brush, and then uh, we also have this construction project on uh, to replace the Cooley Bridge down on County Road. I think right. it's 5610. Uh, that's down in the southeast part of the county. Right around Bunker. And uh, the crews will, the construction uh, crews will be starting on that this coming Monday, January 9th. And so, uh, weather permitting they'll get along uh, get a lot of work done on that project down there we'll be going back we still have the and that's one of the what we call the federal land access program it's a flap mm-hmm. project where uh, it's about a little less than four hundred thousand dollars bridge that we're putting in there with uh, the bulk of that being about three-fourths of that being federal m- money that will cover that and be a, a chunk of state of our own money mm-hmm. uh, county money that will part of that about a hundred thousand or so but you know if you can get a four hundred thousand dollar bridge to replace a bridge it needs to be replaced if you can get a four hundred thousand dollar bridge for a hundred thousand why that's not a bad trade if you if you can afford it so we'll make that work and we got the other flap project mm-hmm. uh on uh, paving the hill the road the county road that goes down to Tanvat, and uh that one got held up because nobody uh, contractors wouldn't bid it. So we'll be putting that back out for bid early this spring and hopefully right. get to jump on some contractors to get that. February, project. I believe, is when they want to put the bid out. We'll probably put that out as soon as we get budget approved. We'll get mm-hmm. that out. We'll get some bids out for chip and seal again, get a little more interest. You know, we couldn't get any interest in uh, hardly anybody to do chip and seal work. Mm-hmm. So that turned into a, a problem. So uh, it's just been a it's just been a strange, strange last year or two to just even try to get get normal work done so <laughs> excuse very, me very very good you did have a request anyway. from uh, members of SACBA um, uh-huh. to help with if possible some improvements at the, the Salem community uh, o- over here for our Salem community at the uh, Ozark Natural Cultural Resource Center yep. because they have an, uh, an exhibit coming in that it's a pretty substantial exhibit, and they'd, they're asking the county if, well, if it's possible. Right. To, They've so got a lot of work they need to yes. do on the old ONCRC mm-hmm. building and uh, Ozarks Natural Cultural Resource Center, and the SACBA does a great job with it. 
And but they've got a lot of work that they need to do. And they need some brick work done and some windows, electrical upgrades, and so forth. And then they've also uh, gotten involved in a deal with the LAD Foundation to uh, uh, have a, a mural, a, a mural painted on the side of the building. And so, but they'd like to have the building. They want they'd like to have the building in good shape before they start applying paint on the side of it, of course. So it's about a thirty-five, thirty-six thousand dollar project they've got, and so they came to inquire if we'd have some ARPA funds that they could access. So uh, anyway, so yeah, Jenna Deason, who's president of the SACBA, mm -hmm. and uh, Liz Condre came in, along with Roger Steele from the LAD uh, Foundation. Is he going to be with us next meeting? Uh, he will He's probably he will probably be here on the radio okay. with us to talk a little bit about what the LAD Foundation right. is and what they do and. Folks, you know, they, there's about 144,000 acres of, of timberland down in our part of the country here, Dent and Shannon, mm -hmm. and, and these counties that uh, they operate. And uh, they have property out here just north of town on sure. Highway 19 that they operate. That's their main offices there. To, uh, so there's a, they're a real asset to our region. And But at any rate, they come in to talk about whether we could, uh, they would be some ARPA money. Uh, uh, that they could use access for that and well <clears throat> we made the decision back earlier this fall to pretty well halt how much more arpa funds were going to go out until we get this uh get everything settled otherwise because frankly mo most what the arpa money that's left there is pretty well wide open for us to go ahead and use it for capital expense uh, uh county needs whatever and then looking at getting this uh, courthouse redone we know as we get into it as we talked about our, earlier there's going to be some things as they get into doing that you know, it's, sometimes it can be like pulling a string on a sweater. You you pull this off and realize, uh oh, we better fix Unravels. this. Unravels. We better fix this back here <laughs> before we proceed on. And so we don't know where that's going to end up. That like we say, that bill there right now is 1.6 million. We had allocated last year 800,000 for that and didn't even really hardly get started on doing it. And so we're, you know, that money's sitting there. So we're gonna we're gonna be looking at a combination of general revenue funds. We're gonna be looking at using some of those ARPA funds and and then here late this year, or actually late this summer, we there was another round of money that showed up from the feds mm -hmm. and uh, called Local Assistance Tribal Consistency Fund, L A T C F is the initials for it. But at any rate there's about uh, it's going to be a total of about four hundred and some thousand dollars there from those dollars that we can use. So uh, we're not making any commitments on on ARPA right. funds really going anywhere else. Uh, we've had another entity, a tax, one of the local taxing entities, mm -hmm. uh, requesting some ARPA funds to help with budget shortfall that uh, they've encountered. And again, a lot of that is due to just kind of the problems of the last year or two as well. So, uh, you know, we'd love to, we'd love to, you know, we've done a lot of good things with those ARPA dollars and we'd love to help every entity that, that needs some help. But right now we got to take care of, we got to take care of our own infrastructure. Well, sure. Absolutely. And it wouldn't make much sense to, to be, uh, you know, doing money to fix somebody else's brickwork when ours is falling down. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and, and ours isn't, don't get me wrong, no, ours no, isn't no. falling down. But it needs work. We're going to be doing some tuck pointing. We're going to be doing some brickwork on the old courthouse, uh, replacing windows and, and electrical. So it's it's pretty similar work. But where, what that final cost is going to be is just pretty hard to tell yet. So, uh, but it's going to be a substantial cost, right. and we're going to we're going to have to meet that need and not get ourselves in a financial bind in the right. process. Old building, old wiring, old plumbing—you don't know what you're going to find. When you go into remodeling an old building, anybody this does it knows it 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 almost always turns into more than what you planned originally. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we we're going to plan accordingly so go. anyway but it, it's a good project and we'll look at it for something we can do to help why uh, uh i'm sure we'll try but we just uh, we got to get through this budget process first to have a better idea even how this is looking before we get any further down that road oh, very so anyway, good very interesting though so you were online for the missouri broadband uh, uh -huh. fcc map and and <clears throat> I, I, i'm trying to <clears throat> put this in in a way that people can understand they want more public input on these <clears throat> maps. The FCC has gotten information back, feedback on it. Sally Berber has been in here talking about that. We've talked about Test it. speeds <clears throat> and doing these things. All this data has been collected. The FCC has put out maps, and they are, well, they're, I actually went on and took a look at the map. It's pretty detailed about it, virtually every address uh -huh. and what they have gotten back on those addresses. Now, obviously, there are some areas they got nothing back on. But other areas, they may say that you actually have very good broadband and you have nothing. And people would argue otherwise. Yes. Right. Yep. You know, so they, they offer you the opportunity to challenge that. Yep. Yeah. Merrimack Regional Planning Commission hosted a virtual 
a meeting with the Missouri Office of Broadband Development. That's what that was, okay. and I did participate yeah. in that uh, by, via phone. And uh, and what they were talking about is what they're, what's going on here. There's 40, another $45 billion of federal money that will be allocated out to states, and that will be allocated based largely on these Federal Communication Commission maps of internet availability. And so they've created these maps, but they, everybody knows that they're not 100% correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can go online, and we've got that, we'll get that address here in a minute. You can go online at bit.ly forward slash mo underscore FCC. That will get you to the maps and get you started. And then there's links you can go to. And if you go to that, punch in, put in what your address is or a, a location that you would have an address that you would like to see internet service at. And it will pull that address up and it should give you information about what internet availability is at that location. That they have determined. That they have determined. Mm -hmm. Now, and many folks are doing that and they found that that's not, that it's not <laughs> right and it's not, uh, correct and there is a uh, you can a link then where you can challenge that information that's on that map even according to the map though uh, if you look at it for the Dent County it shows about over 2,800 locations that are unserved right. which is period unserved not poor service which is a whole lot of the, of the county but unserved locations so that's a, that's a pretty good heads jump but I would encourage anybody out there who has a location where they you know, feel there should be internet service, which is all over the county, uh, go to that. And again, that's that's B-I-T, this is all lowercase, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash M-O and underscore and F-C-C. And you go to that site and you'll, that will eventually get you to that. Uh, for some reason, it didn't go first time when I done it. didn't it. for me either. <clears throat> and, but then I kept after it, and it and then yeah, it went. And you kind of got to go through it. And you know, I I, I think if you go to the uh, Missouri Office of Broadband Development website, I think Got you'll find a link. link that will take you there as well. Yeah. They're trying. They're really trying to get more. Now there's a January 13th deadline on this, mm -hmm. so for this cha these challenges to these FCC maps. But at least I was glad to see that uh, there already was that note that there was over 2,800 or 20, uh, 2,800. 20, yeah, over 2,800 unserved mm -hmm. locations in the county. So uh, that creates a pretty good basis for some dollars right. need to be put out there. Now we know there's these entities that have already gotten some federal contract to. Uh, uh, expand broadband service in parts of the county and we're just going to have to see how that works out if they get it done and and what goes from there but you know it's frustrating I was at another broadband meeting about a month month and a half ago um, well November uh, 17th and uh, one of the things that come out of that is frustration the, in, the internet service providers have of even trying to run the broadband the service, the oh, yeah. fiber optic line, running into things, even something as simple as the, uh, the Trail of Tears here north of town that creates problems mm -hmm. uh, right away because of that historic designation on that and inter and you got to jump through hoops and circles and there doesn't seem to be much coordination on the federal level and making that a little easier right. and uh, it gets to be very expensive so they tell you they want to provide it but but first you know you can't do this and you can't do this and yep. you can't do this and you can't do this you know one of the things on that site though i hope and we need to make this clear daryl there are two maps uh one for your home broadband and a, a very a hard wire and the other one for your mobile so look up on top yeah, you'll that. see a broadband and mobile mm -hmm. so make sure you click on both because that mobile service mm -hmm. is what you get on your cell phone or tablet or whatever other electronic device you might have out there and they, and a lot of them say you have internet service or you have data service and there's a lot of areas in that county you don't. And so please go on well, there. You can be on the ridge and have service and, yeah. uh, and the 300 feet away. And or 10 the, feet away you don't have 100 it. yards away you have none. Reminds me of Green it? Acres. Remember when they put the line up yes, on the sir. top of the pole? <laughs> Mr. and Miss Douglas had to climb the pole to make a he pole. He probably has to make his cell calls from up there too. But, you know, the idea is. I have literally <laughs> I have literally stood on the toolbox in the back of my truck in some areas just to get good enough cell service to get a, get a call out in the. Uh, Parts of the county. I've been in gyms where I've had to run a, a an antenna to just one location where I actually would get two or three bars. Uh -huh. Stick the antenna there and say, "Please do not move my antenna." 
That's the only place you can get it. Yeah. Why it goes the way it does, who knows? Yep. But nonetheless, though, there are two maps. So please, if you are going to look on there and you want to comment, I did notice on the mobile broadband, you can challenge it right there on the site. You can actually huh. challenge it. Now, the other one, you cannot. You cannot. You have to actually get some assistance in doing that. So two people to do assistance. Obviously, Missouri Broadband will help you. You can email them. Mm -hmm. But also, your Den County Extension is supposed to be able to help you as well. So you, you give them a call, 729-3196, and, and they should be able to help you. They are supposed to have people there that can assist you in making that challenge. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of there's just a lot of work going on on that, and so uh, you know, take a look at it and see if you, you have can, about a week. Yeah, some, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's been there's been a lot of uh, been a lot of input uh, from that because of that deal already and stuff. But, but, but if they didn't know about it, Daryl, we want to make sure people check get it out. A chance, yes. Yep, check it out. Yeah, and any comments helps. you make after that will still be there. I mean, they're still going to listen to them. Yep. But it won't influence the money part, and so they'll address them, but. And I think it said virtually for every one that they change, it's five thousand dollars, is what they they figure it's going to change. So if you added fifteen more sites to Dent County, that's seventy five thousand dollars more that would come here for yeah. broadband development. Hmm. That's a deal I hadn't heard, but yeah. you know, I know I just know these dollars that are being allocated to go out, these FCC maps and stuff are going to play a large role in in that determining how much how much goes where and so forth and so on so, and yeah. how they do that so, so please check out anyway. both maps they're they're on the same site yep you'll yep. see one it's up the right at the top of the information is on the right side the maps are on the left side you'll see up there broadband you'll see mobile and you only see broadband so click on both because they both need to be updated yep so anyway that was an inter it was an interesting uh, interesting meeting hmm. so anyway uh there we was a swearing in too. We haven't even talked well, about. We had all the new, yeah. Everybody yeah, that was elected in the last election going on up at the courthouse. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. That was on uh, Friday. Well, a week ago today, I guess, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, swearing in at the courthouse of all the office holders that uh, were just recently elected. So, yep, quite a group of us. Yep. Glad the weather cooperated a little yeah, better, than it, a little better than it was the, the week, week before. Week before, yeah. 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 So anyway, so that went well. Uh, I do want to mention something. Uh, a couple of things that are coming up right away. Uh, I do need to mention that January twenty fourth is the last day for certification of uh, the ballots yeah. for entities that have ballot issues or elections for on the April fourth election. So folks need to get their uh, entities need to get those ballot issues and things to the county clerk angie curley's office by that January, day 24. january 24th and then uh want to mention too the big event coming up is uh kurt fagel with the 100 acre rally was in to kind of touch base with us over plans for the 100 acre rally that will be coming up march the 17th and the 18th st patty's day county. yeah Ooh. yeah so uh look forward to that you know uh uh, you know, it used to be in February. It used to be right around March the first, the last, last of February, and uh, or, or around March the first, and that was always a bit of a conflict with opening of trout season and <laughs> the demand. For I remember it. that one weekend we had all everything was going on at one time. Like, oh man, Whoa. yeah. And the weather didn't cooperate always the best in the world in mm -hmm. February for the road rally. So uh, for the last few years we moved it to March, and that's worked out real well. So it will be March 17th and 18th. We will have the park expose again on saturday morning the 18th down on fourth street which is always a huge draw mm -hmm. crowd unbelievable crowd and the drivers the drivers always comment on how much they thoroughly enjoy the the park expose with uh Dick yeah. county folks here on saturday and uh, so they have they have one actually i think the day before maybe i think it is they do a steelville at, at steelville or potosi one of the two. I think it might be a Potosi. Might be a Potosi. Potosi. Yeah, Crawford County is not doing Oh, they're not still not, not doing participating okay. in the okay. rally. So I think well, when they did, it used to be a steel yeah. mill. So anyway, so that's always very popular, and folks enjoy it. And then again, that will be coming up. I can't believe we're talking about March the stuff we're going to be mm. doing here right away, March 17th and 18th in 2023. But, but you just but did. we are. <laughs> yeah. but prior to that will be the opening day of trout season. And as I, the unofficial as first I, day as of I spring. Say every so. year, unofficial <laughs> first day of spring. Yep. So uh, we're talking about that on January sixth. Won't be long. You know what? Actually, you know what? When when uh, we had this bad weather a week or so ago, and uh, 
and then it warmed up so drastically, as you said, turkeys started gobbling. They were so, they were so happy and thrilled. It's kind of an interesting little deal. Do you realize that the super cold temperatures that Thursday came in on the first day of winter? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was. First day of winter. <laughs> roaring in. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So that was the big day of change, and then Friday morning was just brutal. Yeah. Yeah, brutal. Yeah, but that know, so. yeah, when that come roaring in, somebody said, "Man, you believe this weather?" I said, "Well, it's the first day of winter. Yeah. I mean, you know." Uh, but you know what? It's it's uh, and it's nice. It, let's enjoy this weather we're having now. Uh, and uh, but when you get February behind you. You always feel like you're uh, got to some daylight at the end of the tunnel. But hey, listen, February could flat dish it out. Some oh of, yes, some of the worst snowstorms I've your seen. Your heavier snowstorms are coming in, in yep. February. Yeah, yep, it'll warm sure up do. a little. The moisture comes streaming up and hit a cold deal. And uh, I remember one bad one when actually even H Highway going out west was for all practical purposes, almost totally closed, sure. and they ended up for a while being just one lane that was even passable, and they had to bring in big uh, big V plows to bust that thing open and, and bring in loaders and load it out. Oh, I believe it. Had drifts horribly. We That year, we actually... Uh, we actually couldn't. It was couldn't. Uh, the closest I could get to my house, coming in and out, was about a half mile away. I had to walk uh, for a week. Had to walk uh, th through the snow. Yeah. And I know there's some old folks, some po older folks are listening yeah. to this that walk to school every day, five miles uphill both ways. That's right. So, in the yeah, snow, barefoot. I need, to, I need to quit complaining about a half, <laughs> walking a half yeah. mile to get to the house. But it was an interesting deal. Yeah, so well, we February can dish it out, though. Yeah, we had actually, you know, one of those big snows that came in in December. December is another time you can get some big, heavy snows mm -hmm. right before Christmas. And I remember we had that 27-incher. And then the biggest one I know that we've had, not since I've been in Dan County in February, but I know it was in St. Louis, we had thunderstorms that changed into snow, right. and we had 29 inches of snow on a Saturday into Sunday, uh -huh. and on the Thursday, the following Thursday, we got eight more. Yep. That might that would have been about 1980-something. Yeah. Early I think that's about, uh, about the time I was thinking about. When, uh, 82, actually, 82 I, think, yeah. I think it was when we got that. Yep, or maybe 82. it might have been February of 83, yeah. actually, because uh, 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 we had, mo we had moved, Marianne and I had moved yeah. to another house and this and that, and but it, that's what you're right, because it was, that's what it done here. It, it poured down rain, creeks were up, fields were muddy, nasty, and then the temperature dropped and that rain then promptly changed oh. to snow. And, and huge just flakes. Dumped, just dumped, yep. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, good, what a memory, huh? Good, when you watch it came down, I think, man, it's so pretty. Oh, and then it's no. then it goes from, and I remember the National Weather Service in St. Louis, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, yep. 6 to 8, 8 to 12, yeah. 12 to 16. Hey, wait, wait a minute, you're not even, you're not barely getting that report out, and you're already up in it. Yep, yep, It's yep. just, oh, that was horrible. I think it was heavier snow even up all, in, the St. in the St. Louis area. It was all wet. Was, I had was, to go shovel sidewalks with that, and everything underneath it was still wet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was still water. It was, and the ice had frozen over top, and then you scooped the ice off, and it was wet mm -hmm. with water. Then that froze yep. right away because it was so cold. Oh, it was crazy. Yep. So anyway. So another thing anyway. the county did is that obviously you're getting, you got your new graders in, and then there's been some d discussion with McCoy, who's a John Deere dealer, about yes. a lease that the, the county obviously didn't get their graders on time. Right, the delay. And, and they had to bring you some graders, and those graders probably were not the best graders, obviously. Well, they were used graders. They were usable, but there was a lot of problems that they had. With right, them too. had a lot of problems with the graders, and uh, and then uh, delivery of the new graders got delayed months and months and months, okay. and uh, so we're in a bit of a disagreement with the uh, with the uh, folks mm -hmm. about the uh, the lease uh, payment that they feel is due. So they're they're willing to compromise and. Uh, with us and so there was discussion uh, yesterday yep, on that so discussion and they'll get back to taking us here. it back to the chief honchos they'll get back to us here later this month over that that whole issue there so uh, at any rate but otherwise they do you know they do a great job this is this is mccoy john deere used to be herb equipment mm -hmm. up at uh up at uh cuba and uh, uh i guess fenton is where their off main offices are but at any rate uh, but they do a good job with us for uh, servicing and things and stuff but we did have a we've got a pretty vast difference of opinion on what the uh, the rental payments ought to be on these graders that we had. So we'll work that out. And, right. And get it's all in discussion so, right now. Yeah, so. Yep, so they come in. But, <clears throat> but while we're talking about road and bridge and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, the last cart monies that we got, and that's our county aid road trust, we talk about your fuel tax and tax on motor vehicles. Uh, those come in every month uh, towards the end of the month. And uh, 
treasurer brought that information to us in December. Cart tax just for the, December was up about fourteen thousand eight hundred dollars just for the month of December. So, for the year, our cart tax was up uh, about a little uh, about ninety one thousand dollars over what two thousand twenty one was. Now, again, you know, two thousand twenty and two thousand twenty one both have been such aberrations on everything. But still, uh, you know, we had budgeted about 745000 which is a su substantial part of our road and road bridge, bridge budget, you know. Bad. I mean, you know, uh, for revenue. And uh, we would budgeted uh, about 745000 and so we ended the year with about 816000 So uh, that's always a, a plus when we look at that and uh, wish it was enough to offset the increased cost of fuel and concrete and, and everything sure. else and uh, uh, machinery. And I but, think a lot of that increase, Gerald, is actually the purchase of new cars because probably. nobody could for a couple of years. Right. And then they started to, and, and I think because of the price of these new vehicles. It's, it's, it's I'd say it's helped. probably a combination, though, when you go comparing it with 21. It's probably a combination, yeah, of those of those new new car prices. Now, again, when you're talking about where this money comes from, it, the price per gallon of fuel is fixed. It doesn't mm -hmm. go up as far as by mean. inflation. Now you can <laughs> you can make the argument that inflation impacts it some on the fours on the price of vehicles. What when the people are paying and because it's a straight sales tax on motor vehicles that a portion of that cart funds comes from. So inflation on those does impact it up a little bit. So, but I think you're right. I think uh, new car sales is part of it. But I think part of it also is the uh, increase in. Uh, in fuel usage and things oh, I agree. compared to the year before. So anyway, I it think all, a substantial all comes together. jump is because mm -hmm. of the, the vehicle. It may prices, be. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that we've ever been able to, I don't know to take them off. You pressed them hard enough. But again, that's coming from Department of Revenue. So. You don't want to press them. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. You know. And again, I look at that. That's what it was. And now, now we're assuming and we're hoping it's all ours. So you want to press the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. So that's 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 kind of how that came out. We, so, we laugh in the face they, of adversity. Yeah, exactly. But at least it ended the year on a high note there too, as well. So yeah. Anyway, right, yeah. so that pretty well catches me up, Stan. Yeah, catches all of us up. And again, we do remind everybody, Robert still will or is supposed to be scheduled to be our guest from LAD Foundation. Yep, that's the Leo A Dry yeah. Foundation. And. Uh, Hopefully that uh, weather will allow him to make it. He'll be coming from Columbia, I understand. Uh -huh. So yes, uh, coming down. So anyway, we uh, will have him, and he can explain a little bit more about what they do and and uh, different things that they're involved in. They're trying to get a little bit more involved in the community where they get more visible. Right. And I I think that's a good idea because I don't think sure. people really, half the time, Daryl. I really don't think people even know who what the LAD Foundation is. Right. Right, so he'll be on. Hopefully, if he, like you say, if we work out, he'll be on here in two weeks. What is that? The nineteenth, uh, isn't it? Twentieth. Well, it's like the twentieth. Twentieth. Yep. Yep. So he'll Dang. be on, and then uh, also then uh, probably maybe the first uh, time we're on the air here in February. I uh, I visited with uh, Representative Ron Copeland at, at different times. Of course, I see him all the time, and uh, he'll probably be on the air with us here at our maybe at our first meeting here in February and kind of update what's by then things will be rocking and rolling up at Jeff City and stuff right now they're you know introducing bills and getting yeah. committee assignments and setting up hearings and so forth and so on so we'll catch up and see what's what's happening there that sounds good very good yep. well, we want to remind everybody that Daryl pays for this program out of his own pocket there are no tax dollars county dollars nope and they couldn't pay county dollars to us anyway if they wanted to that's right but <laughs> frozen up right now but anyway but we do want to thank daryl for coming in and doing this getting you a little bit more detail about what's going on in your county you're always welcome to come to a commissioner meeting there nine to twelve well nine until the end of business uh which is usually around noon the, the uh, official agenda says nine or until the conclusion of business, business at, hand. at hand and that's yep. but so usually it's so right around noonish or so unless they set up an appointment now during budget time that all goes out the door we actually were kind yeah. of working on budget afterwards yesterday uh and then and over the next couple of weeks there will be some meetings that will run a good bit longer but we're generally there from nine to noon every monday and thursday right and with west being gone for a, a week or so in, in there with uh, other commitments you know it kind of you want to make sure you got the budget and everything done ahead of time you want to uh -huh. make sure you have yeah. everything we'll, we'll as much as possible that has been addressed so you know there's there's a lot of work you, there's a lot of planning plus you're going to have days off in there you got martin luther king day coming up right the courthouse will be closed and on the 16th day. i believe it is then in february and then, then president's day but that's not in january though no 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 but i mean president's yeah. day comes up in february and then 
You got Truman's birthday, I think, in February as well, don't you? No, Truman. No, Truman's no. birthday's in May. Don't you have two days? You got they, They're doing Lincoln's now. Lincoln's birthday, yeah, yeah probably in so. Missouri, yeah, they're they doing keep, Lincoln's. They're always coming now. up with a new day that they got to be yeah, ought to be closed. Yeah, less and less work. More, yeah. more and more money, but less and less work. Well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> It sure is, my friend. Anyway, again, we want to thank Daryl again for coming in, getting you up to date on what's going on with your county, and we really do appreciate it. And all the years we've been doing this, I, I thank very welcome. You because, I appreciate the opportunity. You know, I think everybody learns a little bit of something more than just uh, what you can get in the paper. What we can report on the radio. Yeah, well, you've only got so much, uh, so much time in your news deals, and the newspaper only has so much space in each deal, and so, nope. So it gives a chance to get into the get into the weeds a little bit more, and I do appreciate the opportunity. And, Very good. And uh, so we'll be back here on the uh, what did we say the twentieth. Twentieth. And uh, God willing, and the creeks don't rise, and the blizzard don't blow too hard. And uh, but until we're back here, then I do hope everyone will be safe, happy, healthy. God bless each and every one of you, and uh, we'll leave you with this. <laughs>